Hey guys, what's up? It's Eric with Advanced Level Automotive. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. Today, I'm over here at this car lot and we're taking a look at this 2013. This is a Nissan GTR. Now, what they're telling me is that the airbag light is illuminated. Also, there's a message on the instrument cluster saying that there's a flat tire. Anyway, I figured this would be a perfect opportunity to show you guys this brand new scan tool that I got. This here is the Think Diag 2. Now, you guys may have already seen me do a review on the original Think Diag. It's one of my favorite scan tools on the market and probably the best bang for your buck. It's basically a Bluetooth device that works with your mobile phone or with the tablet. And what sets this thing apart from other Bluetooth scanners is that this thing is actually a full fledged pro level scan tool for your mobile phone. Now, since we've got this GTR here, I'm going to go ahead and connect the device, show you some of its features and see how much information we can pull from a GTR. All right. So let me take you guys inside the vehicle. I'm going to go ahead and open up the door. Now, let me show you what this Bluetooth device looks like. Again, this is the second version of the Think Diag. Now, if you guys remember, the first version was a lot smaller. It was pretty much just a wireless dongle. And so the first thing you might notice is that this unit is just a little bit bigger. I wouldn't call it bulky, but it does take up a little more space than the original one did. However, the really important upgrade here is that now we have this long cable that comes off of our unit. If you guys have any experience with the original Think Diag, you might have run into the occasional problem where the unit itself was too fat to fit in the area where the OBD2 connector was. And so you had to buy an extension cable like this. On this new and updated design, you don't have to worry about that because it comes with this nice cable. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in like so. Now take a look at the unit over here. You can see that we got these little lights that light up, letting us know that we have power and we have connection to the vehicle as well as connection to the mobile Bluetooth device. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this thing up on the dash. Then we'll start the vehicle up. The start button's down here. Let me go ahead and shut the door. Now take a look at the instrument panel. You can see we have two different warning lights illuminated. First of all, we have the airbag light over here flashing. And second of all, we have this message here that says flat tire visit dealer. Now the car lot owner told me that he already replaced all four of the tire pressure monitor sensors and he successfully programmed them as well. So I'm not exactly sure why we have this message here telling us that we have a flat tire because after walking all around the vehicle, I didn't see any flat tire. So this is where the scan tool comes into play. We're gonna need to run a full scan to see what codes we have. Now, in order for me to do this and show you guys at the same time, I am going to have to switch over to screen recording on my iPhone because unfortunately, the device I'm using for the scan tool is also the same device I'm using to record this video. So I'm gonna switch over to screen recording on my phone and I'll show you guys how to use the scan tool. All right, guys, so here we are on my phone. I know I've got a lot of missed calls and a lot of unread emails, don't judge me. Let's go ahead and open up the Think Diag app. And we're gonna go ahead and go into all system diagnostics. I'm gonna click on VIN scan. You'll hear the slot machine scanning for the VIN number. Diagnosis is starting. And now we're into the main menu. Let's go ahead and do auto search. We're gonna confirm that this is a 2013 Nissan GTR. Now here's our main menu for all of our different functions. If you guys see up here at the top, we can start by doing a health report. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna scan all of the modules on the vehicle, and it's gonna give us a report of any and all trouble codes that are present. We can also do a system scan in which it's gonna scan the modules on the vehicle to let us know what modules are present. We can also do system selection, which is something that if you guys just wanna go in quickly select a specific module, let's say like the PCM, you can go here to system selection and go straight to the module that you're looking for. Up here at the top, you can see that we have the engine control module. If we go in there, you'll see we can read fault code, clear fault code, we can read data stream, we can do actuation test, which is really awesome, bi-directional controls. We can look up module information and we can also do special functions. Again, guys, this is a full-fledged professional level scan tool on your mobile device. And so there's a ton of different things that you can do here. If we go into the special functions, you can see that we can do the idle air volume learn. We can do the EVAP system close for EVAP testing. Lots of different things that we can do here. If we back out, we can go into actuation tests. And again, guys, this is bi-directional control. So we can open and close the vent control valve we can control the fans we can control the fuel pump and ignition timing lots of good stuff here let me back out again we can read data stream i'll go into main signals and you can see all of our data pits here mass airflow sensor coolant temperature sensor air fuel ratio sensor tons of different things that we can look at we can also look at a graphing mode here we're looking at the engine speed i'm going to go ahead and rev the engine up you guys can see how it drew up the graph here. I revved it all the way up to 4,500 RPM. And so really nice graphing mode that this thing has. Let me back out. 
I'm gonna take you guys all the way to the main menu. The other cool thing that we can do here is that we have access to the NAT system, which is a Nissan anti-theft system. So if you guys wanna add a key or program keys, you can do it with this tool. What I wanna do right now is I wanna go ahead and run a health report. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on it. We'll confirm. ECM engine scan. control module no fault code, ABS, oh, anti-lock breaking, us. IC, instrument cluster, no fault code, BCN, body control module no fault code, SRS, supplemental inflatable restraint system, find fault code 2. We'll let this thing finish scanning. All right, so it's done scanning. You guys can see we have all of the results here. But what I want to do is I want to click down here where it says fault report. If you look here, it shows us that we have two DTCs in the ABS control module. We also have two DTCs in the SRS module. We have three DTCs in the multi AV. We have another two DTCs in the IPDM ER. And we have one DTC in the air pressure monitor. So I'm going to click here on report. And this thing actually generates a professional looking report that has all of the vehicle information and shows all of the code details in a PDF format. If I scroll down here, we can go to the air pressure monitor and see that we have this code C1730, flat tire, front left, C service manual. And so this code is probably why we have the message in the instrument cluster telling us that we have a flat tire. If we scroll down here, I'm gonna click on SRS, which is the airbag system. And you can see we have a code B1018, occupant sensor, unit fail. So our airbag light has something to do with the occupant sensor. We can pull up some more information on that code. Now, if I back out of here and we go into the module, I'm gonna click on air pressure monitor. Again, you can see our code C1730 and it gives us the option to look at freeze frame data in the event that we had any. This is a chassis code, so there's not any freeze frame data available. But what's really cool is if you guys look over here on the upper right hand side, you'll see a little question mark. If you click on that question mark, the app will actually take you to Google where you can find more information about your code. You can see it searched up here, Nissan GTR Air C1730. And if we scroll down here, you can see that there's a bunch of videos that include information about this part. You can also check out some forums where people may be having the same problem. And so that's a really cool option to have. I'm gonna close this out. I'm gonna back out of here. Then we're gonna go into the SRS. And again, you can see our B1018 code. I'm gonna go ahead and click on the question mark, see if we can pull up some information on this. You'll see that we have a ton of information on this. Also some YouTube videos here. I'm gonna click on this autocodes.com here. Let's see what information we get from this website. It says B1018, possible causes we could have a faulty occupant sensor we could have an occupant sensor harness open or shorted or we could have an occupant sensor poor electrical connection and if i scroll down here you can see it gives us a description so basically it's referring to the passenger seat there's a sensor in the passenger seat that weighs the passenger and it determines if they're underweight or whether or not there quite possibly could be a child sitting in that seat and in the event that there is a child or someone that is underweight sitting in the passenger seat the computer will turn off the passenger airbag and it will not deploy in the event of an accident again really cool information to have i really love that the scan tool gives you the ability to do that now i think what i want to start by doing is maybe just clearing the codes because one of the things I did notice is that we did have a code for abnormal voltage. And so that means it is possible that at some point in time, the battery may have gotten too low. And whenever that happens, that can set all types of erroneous codes. So I think the first thing I wanna to try to do is clear all of the codes and see which ones come back. So I'm gonna go ahead and back out. And if you look down here at the bottom, you can see that we have an option to clear DTCs. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. Are you sure you wanna clear all of the system fault memory? Yes. Okay, so after clearing all of the fault codes, you can see that we no longer have a code in the air pressure monitor. We no longer have a code in the multi AV and we no longer have a code in the IPDM ER. However, we do still have this fault code in the SRS. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And again, we still have the B1018 occupant sensor unit fail. So I think what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go ahead and look underneath the passenger seat and see if we have any loose connections or damaged wiring. All right, guys, so check it out. After clearing our fault code, you can see that we no longer have the message for the flat tire. However, we still have our airbag light flashing. So let's go ahead and move over to the passenger seat and look underneath. Let's go ahead and open up the door. Now, for those of you who didn't know, I used to be a Nissan tech working at a Nissan dealership. And one of the things that I saw that was really common is that people would leave like water bottles on the floorboard over here. And what would happen is that they would get jammed up underneath the passenger seat and they would cause issues with the occupant safety sensor. So I'm gonna go ahead and look underneath the seat here. So we've got this little flap here. I'm gonna pick it up. We're gonna take a look underneath. The seat is actually really low to the ground. So it's kind of hard to see in there. There's something laying over here. What is this? 
There's a little cap of some sort. Looks like a cap to uh, some type of spray bottle. Let's see if we can see where the sensor is located. It is hard to see it under there, so I'm gonna try to lift it up. All right, so one of the things I did was I disconnected this airbag connector here, and I looked inside to see if we had maybe any corrosion or any bent pins, and I don't know if you guys can see that, but uh, the pins in there look pretty good, so I'm gonna go ahead and reconnect this plug. There we go. We'll check these other ones. All right, guys. So unfortunately, after doing a visual inspection underneath the seat and also behind the seat, I moved it forward and I looked underneath, but I couldn't find anything obviously wrong. There was no disconnected sensors. There was no crushed wires, no bent pins, nothing like that. And so at this point, I'm starting to think that more than likely, it's just an issue with the sensor itself. Now, if I'm not mistaken, I believe Nissan sells the occupant sensor complete with the bottom cushion, though I am going to have to pull up some more information on that but at the moment like i said nothing obviously wrong here i'm gonna have to do a little bit more research and i'll let you guys know what i find out two weeks later all right guys so fast forward i want to give you a quick update before ending off the video now as far as this airbag code the b1018 after doing some research and realizing that I've actually run across this code before and it's pretty common. Nine times out of 10, the fix is to actually just replace the sensor. The problem being is that the sensor is actually built into the seat cushion. And if you guys didn't know, the seat cushion for this vehicle can run upwards of $3,000. So after talking to the owner of the vehicle, I let him know that there is a company online called airbag360.com and these guys actually make an emulator that plugs into the connector for the sensor. Now this emulator costs under $100 and you can install it in just a couple of minutes. So it was pretty much a no-brainer for him. He went ahead and bought the emulator, plugged it in, and that solved the code. Now one important side note I would like to add is if you are going to use this emulator, understand that the passenger side airbag is always going to be active, meaning in the event of an accident that airbag is always going to deploy so just make sure you don't have any small children in the passenger seat other than that i think the airbag 360 emulator is an awesome deal and can seriously save you a ton of money if you're running into this problem now as far as the think diag 2 if you guys are interested i will leave a link down below in the description where you can check it out like i said before this thing is pretty much a full-fledged professional level scan tool for your mobile device and it can pretty much do anything that my thousand dollar launch scan tool can do now a couple of things i would like to add is that this is a subscription based software meaning that when you buy this tool it comes with a free one year update which means you can download all of the OEM software for every manufacturer, and that software is good for one full year. Now, after the year is up, you can decide whether or not you want to renew it. It usually costs about $100 for the whole year, which if you ask me is an awesome deal because that gives you access to all of the manufacturer software, or you can buy the software for just the manufacturer that you work on. Now, buying a single manufacturer software usually runs about 50 bucks. However, the cool thing about that is that when you buy a single manufacturer OEM software, even after the year is up it's not going to lose any of the functionality that software is yours also something i'd like to mention to clear things up for some people that get confused whenever you go into the online store you're going to find that they offer a lot of other reset software things like brake reset throttle body reset oil light reset all kinds of stuff like that guys once you download the software for the oem manufacturer all of those functionalities are in that software Anyways, like I said, if you guys are interested, I will leave a link down below in the description. Check it out for more information. Anyways, at this point, I'm going to end off the video. Like I always say, thank you guys for watching. I hope you found it useful, informational, educational, entertaining. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.